All right, you know what? This is seven o'clock and listen, I can only begin to tell you how, what a day I've had today, but I got here on time, long story. It's a short story because we only have 30 minutes together. But listen, this is your career engineer broadcasting live. Yes, I had a twist day, it's cold outside. I had some, some something happened to my twist, so I took them all out, long story. But that's another video, that's not what this one is about today. So today is first Thursday. And I want to come together to chat with you guys to talk about ways that we can decide who we are before deciding what we do, okay? Decide who you are before deciding what you do. Very critical step in the job search process, critical step. We have lots of people that tend to jump the gun, resumes everywhere, put things out there, but don't have an opportunity to really figure out the passion figure out what they're all about. So today we want to be able to give some steps, some techniques, some things to think about so that as you're getting ready to put yourself out there in the marketplace or if you're getting ready to put yourself out there in the, in the uh, workspace, you have an idea of kind of where you fit. You know, where do I belong? What can I do? What are my gifts? What are my talents? So it is my um, prayer <laughs> today as I've been running. I mean, I literally was uh, in a, a coaching session that had to end and I was running to get across town to get here. This is not my normal broadcast area, but this is, you know, the secondary site. So I just want to come together in your TV, in your living room or wherever you are so that we can get together and do this. So I'm going to do a couple of um, quick housekeeping rules. Of course, we are on um, you know, Career Engineer on Twitter. If you have a question or a comment, we would love for you to engage with us here by, um, you know, definitely tweeting to us at Career Engineer, um, which, which is where you can go there at Tw Career Engineer, so we can reach out. You can reach out to us, so we can take questions or comments live. Or, of course, you can hit me up on um, text. We have an opportunity, and you guys have to forgive me for multitasking right now because I am multitasking. You can hit us up on. Uh, my text, if you have a question or a comment, and the text is 757. In fact, you see it right there in our, um, in, okay, in my lower third. That's what's called my lower third. I'm looking, I'm like there's a light staring, staring at me right, right in my eyes. But you can um, call me at 757-745-4823. Okay, 757-745-4823. You can text if you have a question or a comment. Um, about what we're going to talk about tonight so we can, you know, engage your real uh, questions right now in the broadcast. We're only together for about 27 more minutes, so this is going to be kind of to the point and, and, you know, give you what you need so we can go on. Normally, I'm just so much more put together, but hey, this is the real world, and this is what's important about knowing who you are. So who are, who are you before deciding what to do? Very, very important parts. Again, career engineer, you can hashtag us with... Um, TCE now, hashtag, hashtag TCE now, so we can know you're watching. And um, of course, like us on Facebook. Don't get anxious at our Facebook, our Facebook page and all that good stuff. All right. So let me just also say, um, because I think I am doing a little so day, but have you ever had just one of those days where, <laughs> you know, yeah, it just is one of those days. I think y'all could feel me when I say that. Well, career engineer is no different. I often have those kind of one of those days. So it's all good. It's all good. But you know what? Off Offline or online, we still can work with technology and do what we need to do. So again, remember, you can follow us on um, Twitter at Career Engineer and let us know you're with us. And you can also text to us if you would like to get a question answered online. So hold on one second. I'm actually trying to respond to some people right now. So give me a minute. Um, not even a minute. A TV we call it a second, right? So how do we know what we should do? Where do we fit? What, you know, how do we discover our gifts and talents? How do we find all that out? One of the first things I'm going to ask you, everyone to do is here's a technique that I like to use. And as I'm looking down, please forgive me, but I'm using my, uh, got my handy dandy, little handy dandy which is what I call it, my little handy dandy where I'm keeping eye on a couple of other things as we're doing what we're doing here tonight. Um, you know, there's, I want you, and this is some real just simple stuff. Nothing, I'm not going to get too techy with it, but, you know, make a T-bar. You get a regular piece of paper, 
right? Just good old fashioned piece of paper. You take, you know, make a crossbar with a T on one side or, you know, all the things that you think you, you're, you're great with. I wanted to start there. All the things you think you're great with. I mean, your strengths. And on the other side, instead of saying limitations, I don't like the word limitations. If anyone knows me, I'm pretty big on language. I do not like the word limitations. But I will say underdeveloped strengths. I will say your underdeveloped strengths. We all have them. They're things that, you know, maybe we do have to work on them, but they're underdeveloped strengths. So you have one side of your T-bar, which has your strength, the things you do really well. How about this? The things you do so well that are similar to breathing, okay? Like I'm inhaling, I'm exhaling. I'm not paying much attention to it, but I do it pretty well, okay? I, I mean, it's just nature to me. Let's, I'll use myself as the, the point of context here. Um, talking has never been a problem for me. Go figure. Talking, um, and actually, uh, let me even, I'll even be a little bit more transparent. Talking was such a problem um, <laughs> for me as a young person, um, as a young person that I would get in trouble for talking too much, okay? So I would get in trouble for talking too much. So it's like um, this thing that I just couldn't turn off, this water faucet thing. I just could not seem to turn off my water faucet. Just I'm talking and, and, and people are saying, you know, you talk too much. Or, I mean, they still say that now. But um, you talk too much or chill out or whatever. You know, in high school and, and, and in elementary school was always getting reprimanded in trouble, detentions for talking out of turn. I just couldn't shut up. Well, I look back now and think like, oh, my T-bar, that was a strength. That's a gift that I have. Now, I'm not saying I do it correctly all the time but it's something that's natural it's something that's part of the dna it's not something i have to work to do i can always refine it and i can always tighten it up and i can always make it the best that it can possibly be but it's not something i have to really work at it's like a natural it's a gift i mean hey it's a natural gift so that would be on my t-bar something that i'm really great with so i want you to just really do a a powerful self-examination of yourself I mean, a powerful, you know, be real with you. This is not to impress anyone, um, impress or, you know, or get kudos from anyone else. But when's the last time that you actually, I'm, I'm typing, right? Here we go. You, can, you guys can tell when I'm typing, right? Because I'm looking down, right? When is the last time that you've actually did an inventory on yourself? I mean, got real with you and nobody else. Like, literally got real with you and nobody else. So... Think about the things that you do well. That T-bar is the really first thing into deciding who we are before we put these resumes and go to networking events and do all the things that most people think that they want to do. So we, we want to do this T-bar. So your strengths, the things you do naturally well, it's like the essence of who you are. If I could stop, I'll, again, I'm, I'm the guinea pig tonight. I won't pick on anyone else. If I could not connect the dots, if I could just, if I could just turn that off, Yes, my hair. I know I have a hair issue today. If I, <laughs> not a hair issue, just my hair deal with it's doing. But if I could just turn off the faucets of in my sleep, always wanting to connect the dots for people. I can't, I mean, I'm telling you, since I was a kid, since I had a paper route, since I was a babysitter, since I was a volunteer at the hospital, I mean, at 12, 13 years old, I would see candidate A and I would see candidate B and I just couldn't sleep at night unless I did this. It was a natural part of my DNA. Therefore, it's a strength. The other place that we can find out in our T-bar, again, strengths on this side, underdeveloped strengths on that side. If you want to use the word limitation, you could, but it's not my word. I like to think of limitations as things or underdeveloped strengths. If you can't think of the two, three, or four, you probably have at least three things that you do, I mean, extremely well, not the things you just do okay. I'm talking about if, if I die tomorrow, which again, I'm not speaking against myself, but my point is what would be on my tombstone? It hopefully would be the two or three things that encapsulates my entire being, my entire life. Talking is one of them. Connecting is one of them. If you can't tell it, I will share for you, I will ask you to reach out to people, people who you trust, people who you respect i mean someone that can really give you um a true a, tr a real if you were to ask your significant other or you were to ask someone who truly knows you at the bone marrow part of your body i mean like 
this is someone you trust. What are the things I excel? What are the things I'm good at? When you see me, what, what's the first thing you think about um, when, when, you know, a gift or talent you think I have? How do I inspire you? What, what, is it, what is it about me that makes me so unique? Find the people who know you best. It could be family. It could be friends. It could be, you know, someone maybe that's not even that close to you who can give a more objective point of view. So we all have at least three to five awesome things we do. It's part of our DNA. Why my, my thing is falling down? I guess my, my wife, part of our DNA, part of who we are. One powerful thing, two or three powerful things. The rest of us sort of supports that core function. That's called as well as our purpose, uh, the, the reason we were planted on this earth for, the thing that makes us unique and genuine. It may not necessarily be in our external world. It might be something that's inside of us. It's important in your career, your career world, your entrepreneurship world, to find that thing. There's a main thing. There's a thing of you to find that thing. Interests, hobbies, sure, you can explore the. I mean, I, I love. People may not know this, but I'm not creative, but I do love ceramics. Now, I am not working in the ceramics field because I, I don't have it that way. It's an interest. It's something that takes my mind away, but it's not unusual that any even before I became the career engineer and my hair was right and my everything was okay um, even in my w2 world I worked in an occupation where I could talk mm -hmm. all right me working in the library just was not gonna happen it just wasn't gonna work and I've had the opportunity to work in a library and thought I'd be there 20 years with a government job and was getting notices about since I taught so much you know I might end up you know losing my job you know what I'm saying? Because I was outside of my gift. I was working in an element that wasn't quite me. So with that T-bar, which I think is the first step, just a, a self-assessment, just you, your body, your spirit, your soul, getting on the same accord to see who you are. What do you bring to the table? The left side is those gifts, those talents, those strengths, identified by you or more powerfully identified by others to help you recognize your true essence sometimes we don't see it I mean remember my talk ability was often a bad thing I was often um, reprimanded for it I was often ridiculed about it but it's that very thing that actually has been quite helpful in helping me connect the dots which is my secondary gifting I think and again some of this is not necessarily Francina says I have been fortunate to be able to ask people, hey, what you know, if I could do one, if I had if I could save the world and Oprah gave me $30 million to do it, what's the one or two things I could do to make an impact in this world? And the same three things keep coming up. The same three things keep coming up. So those are my gifts. Now the other side of the hat are the things on your on your right side of the T-bar. My right side, this is my right side. That's your right side, but this is my right side. Um are my underdeveloped strengths, the things I need to work on. And we all are a work in progress. We're not all arrived, okay? We've got things we need to work on. Well, you need to recognize those things. You need to recognize the things you need to work on. And by all means, do not broadcast or put on the front row or put in the front space the things you need to work on. You always broadcast or put in the front row or showcase the things that are your gifts and talents. So the things I need to work on, oh my goodness, I can I can talk about, I have about 15 of those. And here's the power. It's not that you know of them, I know them. So I'm very cautious to make sure that I am not in elements or I'm not working in an environment where the things I don't do well or the things that I truly need to work on are going to be showboated. But that there, those are the things that be showcased. For example, let me give you a story, all right? Again, library, government job, have a job for life, you have to be quiet. I have a problem being quiet. I have a significant, even when I try to be quiet, my thoughts are loud. Okay, I'm whispering right now. My, I just am not a quiet personality except for the times when I am meditating or I'm just thinking I'm pretty quiet. But there is no way on God's good earth I could, could survive in a GS position with anybody's government working in a library where I have to have this internal locus of control and just me and the books be in love with each other and not say a word and whisper. I mean, I would 
suffocate. And that's exactly an example of, of being out of my purpose, not, not just even my individual, what I need to know, but just not being in the right space is, is, you know, the right place. I've got to make sure my gifts and my talents and the element, the element that I work in all have to be in sync. Okay. So deciding who you are before deciding what you do, one of the first things we all need to do is take that inventory, nothing fancy. I don't need you to go do Myers-Briggs right now. I don't need you even to go there. I don't need you to take some other type of assessment test or um, the Dr. Holland's vocational assessment. I need you to get your self-assessment first so you can be at peace with where your, your, your gifts are, where your strengths are. Some people are artistic. Some people are conventional. I mean, I do like Holland's um, self-directed search. It's a great test, but I don't want you to even go there yet. We've got to make sure that you know who you are at your core and your essence. Um, some of us are social. My goodness, my social skills are pretty phenomenal. I have no problem being in a room of 100 people, but I do have a problem being in a room of just four. I see, I just, my energy just, I, I get my energy from people. Yeah, I'm just that kind of girl. What can I tell you? The more people, the more party I have. I just, it's just the way I am. But that's who I am. That's my essence. That's my strength. So whatever vocation I decided to do, if it did not, if it did not have a social component, I would not be successful. If it did not have a social component, I am a social kind of personality, I would not be successful because because let me share this when you don't like something or you don't feel you fit in or you feel like you're just out of order if you don't like something you will never do it very well that's just the truth and the essence of who we are when we don't like something we don't do it very well and i don't care if they offered you a million dollars to do it or gave you 29 dollars and 95 cents when you're not engaged when you're not interested, when it doesn't fit, when it doesn't feel good, when there's no no purpose or no passion to it, you can't make it work, you are trying to make it work, it ain't happening, it is because it's an element that's out of order from the essence and the power and the purpose of who you are. Decide who you are before deciding what you do. So, not, so you've made your T-bar, we've got that off, right? Strengths and power on one side are underdeveloped strengths or areas we need to work on on another. And then once we have identified that wonderful stuff, um, hold on, here we go, Some, something's coming in. Once we identify those wonderful things, that's our little T-bar that we need to place wherever our eyes go. I don't know if you have an office in your home, you've got a refrigerator, right? <laughs> uh, a place where you often visit Okay, a place where you often visit so that you can work that, so you can work your um, your game there. Okay, now let me just pause for a moment and say, here's my little, we call this show identification, show <laughs> station identification. I'm good. And let me give a shout out to Tim. Okay, I'm going to say it. I'm going to get the name right. <laughs> I got to get the name right. And again, those of you watching live, we appreciate you. really do. I normally are in here half hour before making sure I'm promoing. But I gotta tell you, I came from a wonderful coaching session that went a little longer. It was a great coaching session because we had to do that. Tamamu, to, to, I talked with this woman today, Miss Wilson, <laughs> check her out. I want you guys to follow her. Coach T-I-M-A-M-U, this is on Twitter. Coach T-I-M-A-M-U, check her out, follow her. She's my new friend up in Jersey. Thank you, Nikki Woods, for connecting to Dots. Now, you know, I said her name perfect on the phone today, but um, <laughs> T. Mamu Wilson, we thank you for for, for uh, your Twitter and for sharing and retweeting. We appreciate you. Listen, so it's all about deciding what you do. Let me, you know, there's some other people I meant to tweet. I'm sorry, Wanda Dance. Hello, thank you so much, VC Social. We love those of you who just love us. We appreciate you guys. We really do. Uh, hashtag TCE now, so we can know who you are and what you're doing. Again, seven five seven. 745-4823 is our texting hotline. You can see that in our lower third, 757-745-4823. Okay, I didn't know my phone number. So listen, who you are, very important. You've got, one of the TCE, we, you know, we have several foundations. And I know it's very easy to 
blast resumes, hit those job boards, just think you've really accomplished something with all that activity, you know, getting things out there. But if you don't know who you are and what you bring, if you haven't discovered your power, your passion, and your purpose, at least try to do that. And then once you recognize who you are and what you bring, then you take that awesome creation, you take that awesome power, and then you find the right fit, not any fit. Any fit and every fit does not work for anybody. You find the right fit with the right element that meets your personality, your power, your purpose, and your positioning. That's what self-discovery TCE style is all about. Deciding who you are before deciding what you will do. So that T-bar is critical. And here are some other things I want you to think about. Here are some great um, things to ponder. What are some of the things you would do for free? You hear people say that quite a bit. But really, if all your bills were paid and money was not the issue, because a lot of us make decisions based on money and not, and that's really, you know, come on, that's not the best way to ever do anything. But if all your bills were paid and you went to bed tonight, there you go, and your twists are acting right, like mine, mm -hmm. go to sleep tonight, wake up next morning, whatever care that you were concerned about today, whatever monetary care, family care, wor worries, bills, loans, all that kind of stuff, it's is just squash, it's done. Here's my wand, it's called a Samsung. Here's my wand, I wave it over you. And all those things are squashed. They do not exist. So when you go to bed tonight, and again, everybody do this with me, feel this with me, just think, dream out loud and in color. When you wake up in the morning, there's not a care in the world. Everything is taken care of. When you get out of bed and you're getting ready to go to something, what would that something be? And like, what, you know, what, what does it look like? What is that feeling? What is that place you're going to? And if you trust your gut, not think too much and overthink, but if you trust that gut, there's somewhere you would be getting out of the bed and going to because you're doing it not based on finances, not based on responsibilities, not based on hyper responsibility to take care of people, places, data, and things. But everything is solved. You wake up in the morning and you're going somewhere. Where would you be going? You need to brainstorm that, journal that, blog it, or write down a little piece, your little whatever you got. The gut instinct that said that, I know what I would be doing. I know what I would be doing. All right. That might be you know, that might be one of the first things to think about what type of thing in the marketplace you can do. Your interests. Again, I said when you don't like something, you don't do it very well. What are the things you like? What are the things that give you energy? What are the things that you're doing that even when you're doing them and you're not even aware you're engaged, people around you are just they often compliment you on things that you always do that to you is just nomenclature. It's like breathing. Like I said earlier, it's like breathing, it's inhaling and exhaling. But when you're when your when your environment sees it, the people, places who know you and and uh, you know they know you, when they see it, they are wowed by it. They're like, how do you do that? Wow, what a great eye you have, you know, or how'd you put that together? Or how'd you come up with that thought? It's just something that's part a natural raw resource that you have and people will often compliment you on. That's another way of knowing that this thing, whatever that thingamajig is, whatever that essence is, that's something you might want to capture, something you might want to hold on to, to get a better idea of, is this something I should be doing with my life? Is this something I should at least explore? Is this an area, I mean, gosh, there's so many industries there's so many vocational titles. There's, there's thousands and thousands of titles. But is this concept, is this thing that I'm feeling, this thing that I'm birthing, is this something that I should do with my life? Okay, that's another a couple of questions. Where do you get your energy? What are people complimenting, complimenting you on without you even working that hard with it? What are people, people giving you compliments, people saying, hey, how do you do this? And you don't even know. It's just so natural to you. It's just... It's like breathing. So think about when you hear those kinds of compliments all the time, think about that. Write that down. That might be, you might be missing an opportunity. And then again, look at your inner core. You know, I often believe there's inner career moves before outer career results. There's inner career moves before outer career results. Okay, outer, O-U-T-T-E-R. There's a certain thing in your heart, spirit, mind, soul, and in the pit of your belly that you know you're supposed to do this thing. I mean, you feel it. Now, 
Because sometimes we know things, but we don't know how to monetize those things in this world. Okay, I shared earlier. I love ceramics, but I cannot work in ceramics. I'm not going to make a lit. I mean, I'm not going to make a lit. I'm not that talented. I like it. it. It releases some stress. I love dancing. When I get my wobble on, it's off the chain. But I am not going to be making a living, hello, as a professional dancer. It's just not going to happen. It's just I do it well, but I'm not in it to win it, okay? But there's other things in my gut, my belly. I love to get the message out. I love to motivate people. I love it. When people say, oh, my God, I got that job, or oh, my goodness, I got that contract, or hey, my life was on a scale of 1 to 10, I was at a 3, and now I'm living life at a 7. And Francina, you had a part in that. You helped put some things together. In partnership, we helped put some things together. Man, I adore, I love that. I love hearing those reports. So I know that in my belly, and it could be human resources director, I could be a cosmetologist, I don't. You know, because, you know, I could be a bartender, right? Hey, bartender sell problems, right? But the point of the matter is I knew I had to be in a capacity where lives are being changed. I knew in my belly, life, somehow helping folks change lives, helping the average person see that they were extraordinary. I knew that there had to be a way, a talent, a gift somewhere, my impact my or my partnership with others that it was about every Monday morning, lives were going to change. And that's the vocation that I had to choose. And it took me X amount of years to re recognize that and get to it. Imagine if I could have discovered that at 20 or 25. You guys know I'm only 29, right? Yeah. 25 or 21 or 14. Imagine the path and the choices I would have made had I spent the time to know who I am before discovering what I should do. So here's my challenge to, to everyone that's listening. And again, I appreciate those of you who tuned in live. I apologize that normally I do my buzzing at least 45 minutes beforehand, but we will be available on demand and uh, this will be available for you to share with your circles of influence. But here's our challenge. Here's your challenge today. Um, here's, you know, here's your challenge today. So what, we, what I would love for you to do before we get together next first Thursday at seven o'clock is to spend some, you know, spend, are you worth 40 hours of your time to invest and discover you? 40 hours before you even send a resume out and about. Now, if you can't give me 40, give me 10. I mean, I went from 40 to 10. 40 is a good number, to be quite frank. It's a number of purpose. You should spend some quality time on the product. You are the product. You want the marketplace to buy you. You want the marketplace to give you remuneration, commerce, um, all other things that the job gives you, a sense of value, a sense of purpose. Well, not purpose, but a sense of value as you give them in return your gifts, your talents, your passion, uh, all the things that come with your brand, all the value you bring to them. But if you want a company or an organization to pay you top dollar for your product, you got to know your product. You can't sell what you don't know. And you, us, we are the product. So if you're not willing to get 40 hours one time in your lifetime, particularly in your adult working lifetime, to figure out your product, what do you have to sell? What are you, and I say sell, I'm talking about you. Maybe you have education as a selling point. Maybe you're a great problem solver. Maybe you're a great diplomat. Maybe you're an exceptional communicator. Maybe you are a technology genius. Maybe you're a I can get it done kind of person. You know, you bring experience and education to the table. Maybe you have mechanical aptitudes. Maybe you have an amazing, you know, attitude. Maybe you're good with science, technology, engineering, or math. Maybe you're arts. Maybe you're creative. All right. Um, maybe you're great reading. Maybe you're great with policy and procedure. Maybe you're great with operations. But guess what? That's the challenge is to figure out the things where we shine, who we are and what we're about. 40 hours for one career lifetime, every 10 years maybe, every five years, is that not a sweet investment because you are the ultimate result. So find out who you are, find out what you're about. You heard the questions I said. First, make the T-bar, get your strengths and your, and your undeveloped strengths, you know, get a T-bar, what you do well, things you need to work on. Ask your significant others or the people you trust about, you know, what is it about you that 
they admire most? What is it about you that's so unique? Get really good input from people that's not trying to just please you, but folks that would give you some, some, some real meat to chew on. Okay, make sure you do your self assessment. If you know, I, if I know I talk well, I don't even know talk well isn't the right way to say I'm a great communicator. Well, it still means I need to hone and make sure I work that gift. There's proper training, there's proper ways of doing things. Whether you get educated in a classroom or you get educated in the school of life, there's certain ways that you need to, to always hone and build your gifts and talents. We're, we're still a work in progress. All right, so those are three things you can do. Get involved with your networking. Find one network, one, not 20, but one network where your mission, your gifts, your talents can shine. You know, find something that fits your personality. If you're on the quiet side, don't get in a bunch, don't get in a quiet network. No, get into a network that's opposite from you so you, so you can learn and do some, I mean, like our network, the TC network, right? So those are some things that you can really check out. Now, here's the way you can go deeper with this. I'm going to make sure on my Twitter, and I think my time is nearly up. I'm going to make sure on my Twitter that um, we have, my book is called A Mind to Work, The Life and Career Planning Guide for People Who Need to Work. It's dealing with the mind first and the body later. So that's how we operate. Mind first, body later. I'll put the link there as an electronic copy of it on our digital store. You can also make sure you're following us on Twitter, Career Engineer. I'm going to put a blog out here with some other tips on how to Decide who you are uh, before you get out there in the workplace, okay? There's seven steps. There's some things more colorfully designed that you can take each step and almost use that for a whole week or just, you know, one step a day to figure out who you are. Uh, make sure you like us on Facebook. Don't get anxious is our Facebook page. Don't get anxious. And on that Facebook page, we will share all types of things, jobs, as well as um, intelligence to help us make the right decisions in our career, our life, our business. And what else can you do? Well, I hope to see you here next first Thursday at 7 p.m. And I promise you I won't schedule <laughs> I won't schedule a coaching session close to the time. And I'll make sure all the hair is in check. So let me just give a couple of station IDs. This is your career engineer. Again, I want to thank those of you who are tuning in. My apologies as I am running kind of solo right now. I am not able to look at the comments in the page if you are here. Share a comment in our YouTube page, and I will definitely reach back out. And again, we will be here next month at 7 p.m. on a Thursday. You know what we always say in TCE land, don't get anxious. Always, always be prepared. Thank you for sharing the company. Be safe, and we will see you next month. Stay safe, guys. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.